What is up? What is up? What is up? How are we doing? Doing good? Having a good day so far? It's been a long day, but it's been a great day. So we thank you for uh, hanging in there with us. Any, uh, raise your hand. You having a good time? Anybody? Anybody? That's the majority of people. We love to hear it. All right. So I'll cut right to the chase, guys. This. My man. See, I appreciate it. At least one person knows my name. That's great. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to bring out the next host who's going to lead this star-studded panel. This host is a Giants quarterback. He's an ex-Florida Gator, host of ABC's The Bachelor, and also hosting Food Network's Baking Championships. That's my favorite thing he's done, honestly. I love a good baking show. Um, and he's also a college football analyst on ESPN and ABC. He's launching a new line, Jay Palmer, on Fanatics.com next month. So make sure y'all follow him on all socials and check that out. Guys, welcome to the stage, Jesse Palmer. How we doing? Good to see everybody here and welcome to the Night of Champions celebrating 100 years of the New York football giants. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm really fired up for this. Uh, obviously, I, I am a former giant. I played four seasons, I promise. They couldn't find an action shot of me. So I had the black and white in the suit, but I did play and I'm excited tonight because we get an opportunity to really go down memory lane and really tell stories and celebrate everything that is the New York Giants. We have an amazing, amazing panel here. Some former teammates of mine, some personal friends of mine, and all-time great New York Giants. And I think what's pretty cool about this panel is that we have representation of all four Super Bowl championships that the Giants have won. So, we're not even gonna waste any time. We're gonna get right into it. And this first guy I'm gonna introduce you to, he had a bit of a tough ride. Holds New York Giant records for incompletions, <laughs> interceptions, and losses. And yet somehow he was able to fight through all of that. And he's one of only six players ever to win multiple Super Bowl MVPs. <laughs> He holds every major passing record in the New York Giants record book. He's the best to ever do it at the quarterback position. And very, very soon, ladies and gentlemen, he's going to be a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Please put your hands together for the one, the only, Eli Manning. All right, next up, this next guy really needs no introduction at all. He played 15 years wearing the Giants blue, and not only is this guy one of the all-time great Giants, he's one of the greatest defensive players in the history of the National Football League. He's a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He's a Super Bowl champion, and you see him on television every single day. Let's hear it for the great Michael Strahan. Uh, probably in the middle somewhere. That was a better intro than Eli had, by the way. E Eli brought a prop. I don't brought like a that belt. dance. I can't do that dance when I I don't know what out. he did. That, that well, just, you know, you're better. not coordinated. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up. He was a third-round pick out of Notre Dame. Played nine years with the New York Giants. This guy was one of the great leaders the Giants have ever had in the locker room, both on and off the field. He's won two Super Bowls, and he's one of only two players in the history of the National Football League to have multiple sacks in multiple Super Bowls. Let's hear it for Justin Tuck. All right. 
Why, why wouldn't you go sit beside Michael? I mean, the shade. Okay. We're getting, we're, I'm sure we'll get into it later. <laughs> he likes being close to quarterbacks. He was used to being very close to quarterbacks. Because y'all always wear red jerseys. I'm not used to this, so that's uh, I wanted to okay. touch True. Eli. All right, next up. He was the eighth pick of the first round. Started his career with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and then in 2005, he showed up in East Rutherford, New Jersey, and every quarterback in the room, Eli, myself included, got really, really happy. This next guy had one of the all-time great plays in Giants history, catching the game-winning touchdown pass in Super Bowl 42 against the previously undefeated New England Patriots. How about Plaxico Burris? All right, last but not least, this guy was also a first round pick. Started his career with the Arizona Cardinals, then signed with the Giants. Played seven years, and this guy really had a massive impact for the franchise and was a part of the first two Super Bowl championships the Giants had, including being MVP of Super Bowl 25. Believe it or not, I couldn't believe this when I saw this. This next guy is the only Giant to ever rush for 100 yards in a Super Bowl. How about O.J. Anderson? Well, it's great to be up here with all you guys. It's going to be a lot of fun going down memory lane and, and really kind of pulling the curtain back for what I think are the best fans in the National Football League, Giants fans. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think one of the great sayings that the, the Giants have in the franchise is, once a Giant, always a Giant. Yeah. And Eli, you're a guy that was once a Giant, always a Giant, only a Giant. Something you famously said at your retirement press conference, what did it mean to you to be a part of this franchise? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been the world to me to come to New York Giants. No one has, has enjoyed playing for the New York Giants more than me. And I can say that in front of all these guys, and I know they feel the same way. Everybody that plays for the Giants feels that they're the luckiest person to be in that, in that organization, that franchise, because they truly care about the players. Uh, and you get, once, once you get in that organization, you understand not many people leave, whether it's people in the PR, whether it's the trainer, Ronnie Barnes. These people get there, they want to stay there, and I was the same as a player. I wanted to stay there as long as possible, and, and at the end, didn't want to play for another organization. I, I talked to other teammates that, uh, you know, that left and went to other places, and they, they said the same thing. It's not the same. It's not the same here. J you know, Tuck and I talked a bit about that, and so um, it's just a, a great place, great fans and great support, and just love my 16 years with the Giants. Stray, you did, you did 15, yeah. I mean, the Giants were loyal to you. You were loyal to the Giants a lot too, though. Every free agent period when a contract would come up, there were a lot of other teams that wanted the services of a future Hall of Famer. Yeah. What was it about, what was it about the Giants that well, was right for you? And the one team that, that always would call every draft to try to trade for me or it became a joke because they realized the Giants would do it was the Washington um whatever they call them now Washington uh yeah that team the football and, team and the Giants would just hang up the phone on them but yeah I had you know free agency times that I could have left and I won't lie I threatened to leave just to get a better contract and it worked but I can't imagine being anywhere else. Like to move here, you know, 21 year old kid and retire the 36 year old guy. Um, it was, there's no other organization like it. Eli said, I've had plenty of teammates that went other places. Every one of them said, the grass is not greener over here. The way they treat you as a person, as a player, and, and just everything is first class, yeah. and, and including the fans, including you. I mean, so. 
You know, if you become a giant, you are very lucky guys. Already lucky enough to make it to the NFL, but to come to this organization, you're twice as lucky. It's, it's such a good way to describe the organization, what you said, class. This organization is a classy organization. Plax, you played for Pittsburgh. You played for the Jets, too. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not, I'm not asking you to, to trash other teams, but what was different about Big Blue? Oh, man, you know, um, uh, when I was in Pittsburgh, we, we had a pretty good football team uh, when I was there. Uh, uh, we had just had a 15 and one season, and uh, I was going into free agency, and I said to myself, you know, where can I go to kind of, you know, put my, add my piece to the puzzle to help them, you know, win, win a world championship. And I said to myself, I said, well, if the quarterback is, is anything like his brother, then I got a pretty good chance to win the championship. <laughs> 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 so, so with that being said, uh, man, listen, it was a great time, man, for, for me to come here. And, um, yeah, I, I was embraced from day one, you know, coming through the door. And obviously, you know, uh, playing with Jeremy and Tiki and, and Imani and those guys and, you know, uh, Mike and, you know, Tuck. So it, it was just a great, it was just a great time, you know, uh, for me to be a giant playing here. I remember we were so excited to, to have you come in. Um, when I was in college at the University of Florida, we had a cornerback named Lido Shepard who Plax was boys with. And Lido would invite Plax in the summertime down to Gainesville and we would throw. And we didn't have a receiver like him. We had a lot of good receivers that played in the league, but they were like 5'10". Didn't look like Plax. So when I found out he was coming, I was like, this is going to be pretty good. Eli is going to really appreciate this. Justin, you, you had an incredible career here in New York, but you've had an amazing career also post-career. Coming to New York, being embraced by this fan base and having the opportunities you've had because of New York, what has that meant to you? Yeah, I think, you know, it's hard to put into words, right? Because it's so different from how I grew up. I'm still this kid that grew up in, in rural Alabama and, like, just being in on panel with these guys and, and going through the things that we went through and, and having success that we had on the football field. You know, obviously being a winner in New York exposes you to so many other things. And I mean, everybody on this panel is, is, is representation of that. So, you know, I, I, I can't put in the words how, how it's different. And I'm one of those guys who did go to another team and did realize that it wasn't um, as green as, as everyone you know thought it would have been. So. I, I hold this organization, this city, these fans uh, in such a high regard because now as I'm, you know, you know, we're all on the other side of our playing days, we're still reaping the reward of you guys, this city, um, the exposure, the experiences that we've, we've had the opportunity to be a part of. And that, I think that speaks volumes to how this is different. And again, we're not gonna badmouth any other team or any other city, any franchise. But New York, New York City is so, so vastly different from anything else that's out there. Um, and, and anytime I get asked from a player, like, what, what is New York like? I'm like, New York is like anything you want it to be. Because you can be exposed to anything in this city that you want to be exposed to. And, uh, you know, I'm obviously I'm reaping the rewards of that. So. This franchise has had, obviously, tremendous success all throughout history. But, OJ, your, your Giants teams kind of set the tone with respect to the Super Bowl era. They've won world championships in the past, but you were part of the first two. So many legends, coaches, players, but you were such a key facet of all that. What did that mean to you? Well, first of all, you don't have to go in order which we came out here on. You started going, I mean, dude, you just should have came to the Godfather first. I mean, you work your way around the whole board the way we walked out here. I'm going, like, look at this dude here. What is he really up to? But yes, we started it all off. But um, going back to Eli, um, I was actually supposed to be the giant before Sims. I was told by the coach that visited me in Miami and said, we're picking first, seventh in the first round, and you're going to be picked. And they tricked me. <laughs> and they took Sims instead, but seven years later, I was traded. So yes, the grass is greener on the other side. When I left the Cardinal, one and five to a team that was five and one. 
But it, it's just been a blessing for me. The giant organization has welcomed me in, just like I was drafted early on with them. Uh, I'm just elated the fact that they actually put me on the ring of honor, which I'm thinking uh, only seven years uh, now. So <laughs> I'm on the wall with these guys right here, but I'm trying to get to the hole like that guy right there. <laughs> and soon that guy right there. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe me and Eli may go together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, o OJ, when you, when you think of those two Super Bowl teams, mm -hmm. what stands out? How would you define, if there was one word you could think of that described those teams? We, we were just mentally tough. We, um, we, we stepped on the field and knew that we can outwork our opponents. I mean, when you think about the players who played at that time, you talk about Harry Carson, yep. George Martin, yep. Lawrence Taylor, it's a great one, you know. We had Kenny Hill. I mean, we had a team that by far was the best players that probably was Giants history, and they'll probably say different, but, um, you know, I, I would say, and we argue this all the time when we talk, but I believe that the team in 86 would have dominated any of the Giants teams that won Super Bowls. You know, um, I, you, might, you it, might be right, you might be wrong. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, because we can, because we can go down position and we can call our position and we can line players right in each position and that argument would be true. Well, I'm just saying. But they just said we're not going to trash other teams. We're going to trash our own damn team? What you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get this right. match. <laughs> you know, we talk about <laughs> backstage. So this, is, this is what happens. This is what happens. And I got to tell you a story about this guy here. I'm a rookie, 1993, mm -hmm. coming to the locker room scared like scared, coming from a HBCU, big fish in a small pond. <laughs> I walked into, I was a minnow in the, in the ocean. And all the vets come in that room and you just feel like you're just in intimidated. I remember looking at guys going, if I got to look like that guy, I'm never going to make it. He's got muscles. I don't, I didn't know they had muscles right there on my body. <laughs> and every day after practice and camp and in our mini camps and everything else, OJ say, young fellas, get your stool, come here. And we get our stools, we sit around him, yep. and he would sit there and lay out to us about the league, how it worked, um, on the field, off the field, giving us all this advice. And some of the best advice he ever gave me about on the field is in this business, you're gonna hear about the guy, he has this reputation, he's great, he has that reputation. Don't listen to what anybody has to say. Play against that guy yourself. You determine your own, you know, your own opinion of him, which is so true because some guys' reputation was better than they were as a football player. Yeah. And so OJ took care of us young guys, which meant the world to me because you made me feel like I belonged and I was comfortable, and which in turn made it easier for me to want the young guys to feel like they belong and they were comfortable because I realized a lot of guys didn't want you to feel that way. So I want to thank you for that. You're welcome. You're welcome. I want to thank you for that. And, and I want to follow it up by saying since 86, you know, our teens, we all too old to go play football. So it's called, we can do a golf match as you mentioned backstage. Hey. And we will whip y'all old asses. <laughs> True. <laughs> this, but the follow, follow up on that, just what Michael was saying, you know, obviously, uh, OJ, Michael passed that on because when he was the old man in the locker room when I first got there. Um, oh, it was old. <laughs> <laughs> It's like everybody's coming for you today. He, but no, but he, before every game, he would come up to every single player and have something he would say to them and, and like their own deal for me. Hey, have fun out there, young man. That he say to me every before every single game that we played together. And he was always, you know, always had my back, always was good to the media, what he was saying about me after a tough game. And so those things make a, a huge difference for young players. And you see that impact of a guy, hey, he's in his 14th year. 15th year, you see how he's working after practice, how he's teaching the young guys and working with Tuck afterwards and talking about drills and they're doing their, their little, they're playing patty cake with their hands and doing the little hand things that they all did. I didn't know what y'all were doing, we're slapping around. And um, the swim move and this and that, uh, all made up stuff. They looked like they were working when they weren't. But you know, he, he was passing that knowledge down and, and that's contagious because you see a guy like that 
And as you get into your fourth, fifth year, you want to do that same thing. And you're going to the receivers and you're going to other guys and making sure they're comfortable and they're ready and they understand the impact that they can have um, and, and how important this is for them to be mentally tough and to, to work hard and, and do those things. So he's definitely set the stage for us. I want to ask you about the 2007 season. Uh, it was a magical season in a lot of ways. It really was. When I think back to it, I mean, that was a team in 07 where you had so much talent, but it was a team that kind of found itself as you went on. It, it, it wasn't easy. You, you, you kind of snuck in the playoffs. A wild card team had to go on the road right away, had to be road warriors all the way through the postseason. And you were able to ultimately overcome what a lot of people thought was the greatest team in the history, an unbeaten Patriots team. Justin, was there a moment throughout that year, whether it was in a game or whether it was in practice, that you thought really galvanized your team and something you could rally behind that changed the course of the season? I think it was multiple moments. I, I think the, the well-documented moment is Washington, right, the goal line stand, um, well, they had, you know, what, four downs to get a yard, and we was able to stop them there. Like, if we don't win that game, right, we, we, we're, we're, we're 0-3 in a very difficult NFC East. Um, you know, have lost, we'd have, we'd have, at that time, we have, would have lost three NFC games. So winning that game and coming out of there, just the, 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 the confidence in which we started to play with after that, you know, we, like you talked about it, we went on to win 11 road games in a row. And that was the identity of that team, right? The harder it got for us or the more people, the naysayers spoke up about that team, it, it fueled us at, at more than any other team I'd ever been a part of. So I think that was the, the one that really, really put us starting to play our best ball. Now, obviously, in the course of the year, we had some other setbacks, whether that be injury or just not having the best game. But it, at that point, we knew the talent that we had on the team. We knew that we were still trying to figure out what Col Coach Coffin wanted from us. And the leadership on that team really, really just elevated. Eli, you know, Michael, AP, those guys never would allow us to get back in that gutter that we could have been in at 0-3. And, and once we got in the playoffs, man, we were healthy. We were playing our best ball. And I, we were – I mean, we had nightmares, matchup nightmares all over the field. Like, you just talked about a 6'5", six, 4'4", six, four, four wide out. You had D linemen that could play anywhere on the field, whether that would be with our hand in the dirt or roving his linebackers. And you had Eli making every throw possible. The confidence of that team was so tremendous that like, it didn't matter who we played. We knew we were going to figure out a way to win those games. Yeah. Blacks, I want to ask you, because you were just talking about you had just come from Pittsburgh. It was a 15-1 and one team. You knew what successful football looked like. At what point of the 07 season did you say to yourself, we can win this? Man, you know what? Uh, it was so many different storylines, you know, going through that season. I was uh, t t just talking about starting off 0-2 and, and we couldn't lose that third game. And I remember we had a chance to get into the playoffs. I believe we were playing in Buffalo. And we were down 21-0 to zero in that first quarter of that football game. And I'm sitting on a bench saying to myself, I said, man, we got to find a way to win this football game because we know that we have the Patriots coming into the building next week. And after we got that game, after we won the Buffalo game, um, I don't really think the Patriots really wanted to play us. I really didn't. Because, I mean, we could play any brand of football. Like, we were like bullies. We didn't care. So we had the guys up front. You know, those guys were just – uh, probably the, the best offense of line group that I that I played with in my in my 13 years. Those guys. Absolutely. I mean, we could run it, we could throw it, and we didn't care. Like we, we, we could play play physical football, finesse, however you wanted to play. Uh, you know, we would just match up with anybody offensively and defensively. But man, we were just a, a, a gritty, tough group of guys that no, nobody cared who got the success. And I, and I think uh, one, of the, one of the main reasons why we were able to win the championship that year because uh, you, you have to be unselfish. And I think, uh, you know, little things like me catch a pass and Armani running 20, 20 yards across the field to get a block just so I can get two or three more yards, those are the things that come contagious. And that's one of the reasons why I think we're world champions because I, we're just unselfish. I knew, I knew Plaxico 
thought we had a chance when we got in the playoffs because he practiced for the first time once we got in the playoffs. <laughs> I he, did not, it. he did not practice at all through the course of the season. Not once. Uh, he had an no, ankle. The worst ankle. thing that could happen hey. is the first, the first eight games he didn't practice. He was he had the hurt knee, and then mysteriously on game day it felt great. But the first yeah. eight games, he caught a touchdown pass. Yeah. So he's like, I got a streak going. I can't, yeah. You don't mess with the streak. I yeah, can't practice. Streak. I don't think they hear you, Eli. I, yeah, I walked Plax to the practice field and, and the team started huh? clapping. I don't think they heard you. Plaxico did not did not practice, practice that season until the playoffs. <laughs> and you know, until and the you know, playoffs, he practiced during the playoff stretch, was playing great, and then, and then he fell in the shower Super Bowl week <laughs> and didn't practice Super Bowl week. I don't know. It, I mean, it, it to, to put it in perspective, Allen Iverson practiced more than you. <laughs> yes, he Just did. so you have an idea. Now, that but, obviously yeah. gives you a lot of credit, Plax, because I, I know I could never step on a football field without, you know, going through the craft. And that's yeah. what me and Eli, I mean, that's what me and Stray was doing. We was playing patty cake. Yeah. We was preparing for that 360-pound that Olama that was trying to punch us in the wax face. On, you had off. five of those protecting you all game, so yeah. you never knew what that was about. But to, to that point, I mean, I – that just speaks to the talent that that guy over there has to not work on anything other than like the the playbook during and the it, season, and then come out and give us eight catches, 116, and two touchdowns. I mean, hey, that's why I, I don't agree with you, Otis. I think I think that old seventeen would give your eighty-six team a, a, a real we running. We give you a run for your. I money. think we give you a run for uh, your money. Now well, listen, I also give you credit because you guys had some studs, but we had some we had some match you know nightmares. It, you know what it was? I think the reason being because I even look at that team because I, I you know I missed training camp. I was trust chilling. me, I know. I was like, I, I'm not yeah. going back. I'm, I can't. You know, Tom was, was driving me did, nuts. You like dig? enough. Did, did you hit a dig? What do you say? He said, "We know." Oh, trust me. I mean, me, me and Straight have talked you, about this you multiple times. <laughs> training camp, training camp. You go some obscure place. Now they do it at the stadium. Oh, it's not. They have camp. catered lunch and dinner. They stay at home. Here we're at, we're up at uh, when I first started at Fairley Dickinson. Oh, yep. Then we're up in Albany, Albany, SUNY Albany, in a dorm room, pushing two beds together to make at least a queen. And you got to lay across so you don't fall in a crack in the middle. I'm a grown man. You know, what am I sleeping like this for? What am I doing? 14 years, a month, a year. I spent over a year of my life doing that. Yeah. I didn't want to do it one more time. So I was like, I'm going to retire. And I was somewhat considering it. But I got a call from the guys. And they're like, you got to come back. I get a call almost every day. You got to come back. I'm like, why? It's different. They just kept saying, it's different. They couldn't explain why it was different. They would just go, it's different. And, you know, I was like, okay, I know they have a limited vocabulary, but okay, it's different. <laughs> so I, I had to imagine a bigger thing. And then when I came back, it was, because it was the most unselfish team that I'd ever been on. And it was a bunch of guys that, you know, if somebody goes down the roster, they may not go, oh, oh, oh. But we work well together. We didn't want to lose for each other. We were playing for more than just us individually. And I think that's what made the team special. And I, I, I remember we lose, we, we lose against the Patriots the last game of the season, and OC comes up and he goes, next time we see them, we're going to beat them. And I'm like, they're in the AFC. We're in the NFC. The only time we could see them would be in the Super Bowl. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, okay. He, All right. he we got a long it. way to go. Because yeah. the only team I worried about in the playoffs, Dallas. That was the only team. Wow, well, you, can, you can boo them, but they, they were they the only squad. team. They and you squad. can tell I was worried because every game I gave a stomp you out speech. Stomp you out. He doing, we showed up. I'm giving all that. We get to Dallas. I'm like, you know, it's been an honor playing with you guys. <laughs> Let's True just story. go out here and put our best foot forward. True you know? story. <laughs> True story. And when we won that game, it was over. The Super Bowl was ours. The Patriots didn't want to play us, and OC's prophecy was was right. And um, yeah, and these these guys, I gotta, I, I just gotta, I gotta say that it was just a team of guys who really wanted to win for each other, and we were just so happy for each other's success, and we supported each other, and that's what a team is about. I mean, that's what life is about. It's like the people around you who support you, and individual things are great, but you're never gonna win anything in that regard. Now, doing that. now you, you you know something that was interesting that 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 Michael and and uh, Tuck said is. 
Every team that the Giants played in the Super Bowl, they played them regular season. We played Denver at home, lost to Denver, and we saw them in the Super Bowl, beat them. Played Buffalo at home, lost against them, played them in the Super Bowl, and beat them. So if you want to look at a trend of what's been happening is, we'll lose to you when it don't mean anything, but we kick your butt when it matters. So that's what we find out. Yeah. All right, E, if you could rewind the clock, if you could relive one moment, if you could replay one game, <laughs> what game would it be? Oh, um, I'm, going back, I'm going back to Green Bay in the, in the NFC Championship cool. game. That's I just cool. want to feel that coldness again. Say, you want to feel cold? I, nope. I, I want to feel that. I know Plaxico loved it. You know, so we, <laughs> nope. He, hey, he was fired up that game. Something was, something was working that game. But oh, yeah. I remember we, went, we, always, we, we used to go out pregame. Every, before every game, and I go Plaxico and Amani Tumor, and we had about a 25-minute kind of throw-in <laughs> session, and we go through all the routes and, and do our, our routine. And all of a sudden, we're, we're like five or six minutes into the routine, and they're not catching anything with their hands. They're bodying everything. They're jumping up. Their hands are all frozen. And I kind of looked at them. They're like shivering a little bit. I'm like, are y'all y'all loose? Y'all warm? Like, yeah, yeah, we're good. We're, let's go in the locker room. Let's, and, but, we, I mean, it was good to go out there because you know – you, know, you couldn't let your hands get cold. I knew I could not let my hands get cold. And they wanted to play man-to-man, -man, press man-to-man -man all day on Plaxico. I, you end up having 11 catches. I think, I think nine of them were on, we just called fade stops, where he, he was going to be pressed. If the guy was off, he ran a five-yard hitch. If the guy pressed him, he was going to run a fade. I was going to either back shoulder him or I'd lead him. If he beat him, I was going to lead him down the field. One time he went inside, and it looked like a slant, but it was still the fade stop. We, I mean, it wasn't a complex. This is like... You know, you, you do this in, when you're eight years old and playing peewee football. Hey, run a hitch or a fade, and that's all we were running. And we kept doing it, and they couldn't guard them. And that, we just did it up and down the field. That's the game? That's the game you want to play yeah, again? Yeah. Yeah. That's Let's it. go. It's huh? not, you know, I, I, there was one game you played I wish we could play again because I had a great time. <laughs> We, the D-line defense is sitting on the bench, and we're just laughing. Because you were throwing these picks. <laughs> and they literally, they ran back one. Minnesota. Yeah, then they ran Minnesota. back Minnesota. Minnesota. And I Minnesota. think they ran back. It got to the point hey. defense, we like, just keep on throwing them in line. We're we going to sit here on the bench and watch you go back out there and do it again. Why he do you but like it, that? But it, was, yeah. it got to the point where it was comical. Uh, we loved you. It wasn't funny. It was very funny. It was not good. Hey, I remember not I called good. Eli after the game. I got home and I was like, damn, they are going to destroy him in the media this week. So I picked up the phone and I called and I said, hey, man, don't worry about it. We'll get him next week. And he was like, yeah, we'll get him next week. Uh, I remember one play in this game, man. It was one of the funniest things that ever happened between me and him. So we got like a, 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 a free safety wheel blitz. It was like a 62 protection. And the cornerback, I, I got a 90 uh, fade on, so anything in the 90s is locked. So I get a, a, a wheel free safety. So the cornerback jumps outside. There's this huge hole in the middle of the field. And I just come off the line. I turn, and I'm like, throw me the ball. And he's like, what are you doing? So he throws me, he throws me the ball. I run for about 40 yards for a first down. I get up off the ground. He's standing like this, like. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and he said to me, don't ever do that again. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? It's a 40-yard play. He's like, don't ever do that again. <laughs> oh, my God. Stray, I want to ask you about the 2001 season. So that was my rookie year, and that was a very special season for you because you broke the NFL record for most sacks in a season. Was it 22 and a half? 22 and a half. 22 and a half. I had a, I had a front row seat to that every single week. What was it like? I mean, you had an incredible career, but you were virtually unblockable every single week that year. Yeah, I mean, there's a backstory to that, which is like sad, but at the same time inspiring, inspired me, was um, that was you know, September 11th. Yeah. And I'll never forget when that happened and we didn't play. A lot of the guys, the, the leader, the, myself, Je yeah, Kevin Mawai with the Jets, all the guys we were in cities that were really affected were like, we're not playing. We're just not going out there. And um, the league finally said, okay, no football for a week because we figured there were bigger things to think about. And we had a chance of the team to go down to ground zero a few days afterward, after and, and take supplies and, 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 and try to do what we could do, which really wasn't much, but just try. 
and I saw first responders, firemen, policemen, I've never seen people that tired, ever, and, but unified. And, and from that moment on, I said, how can I ever complain about being tired? How can I ever complain? I mean, we in our job is literally to go out on weekend and give people something to entertain them mm -hmm. and something to take their mind away from that. So that we played in Kansas City, I think the next week, the first week back, didn't do much. In the first three games, I had no sacks. And then I just said, run through people. That was it. Run through people. They don't want, most guys, you surprise these big guys. You get a 350, 60 pound guy, you get a guy like my size, 250 something, 260. They don't want you to run through their face. 280. What are you like, 285 at then? 285. Easy. I was oh, not 285. Oh, 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 straight. I've never straight. was 285. Straight. 285. 267. In 01? I was there. Now I know, like, oh, in, when I, in you know, okay. 01? <laughs> no, 01. 93, I got up to like 85, 285. Because yeah. they told me to gain weight. They didn't tell you how to do it. I went to McDonald's. <laughs> I had no idea. I'm now, serious. They didn't tell me how to gain weight. It wasn't the program that we have now. But then I, I lost weight. I'm 91. I was probably about 267. Two, 267. Now, this is the same guy that did not think that he was worthy enough to play in the NFL coming from the – Absolutely. The, yeah, I mean, just – See, you just never know. You never you know. know. If you, you know work hard enough at you know, something, but, something good can happen. But, but you know what? I think people got the misconception that we retired, but we were 36 years old. Like, we weren't, like, old. But you were 36? I was 36 when I retired. 36? 40? 39? 39? It's 32. Damn. 36. 32? 36. <clears throat> Man, 20, I got a 27. daughter your age. 27. <laughs> 27. 27. <laughs> All right. 28, maybe. 28. 28. Uh, had, and I got to say, had other things I wanted to do. White pitch review. They couldn't have yeah. got a pitcher in the uniform. That's what I said but today, to everybody I when I walked out here. But I'm straight. Like, I promise I played for the New York Giants. There's evidence <laughs> that, out there that's somewhere. That's definitely a media person you. But you know, yeah. but, but straight, to your point about, you know, the longevity of you guys, right? I'm, I think I'm not talking about you, Jesse. I'm sorry. Uh, I think I have the shortest career here of all you guys, correct? So, like, but, like, I remember... Well, how many, is, oh, oh, how I, many? I played 11 years. But I, I, a short career? No, I'm saying compared to you guys. You know, guys played, anybody can get double digit pretty amazing. But what I'm saying about, and I'm giving straight his flowers here, I never forget it. You know, when he, when he, he said about when he semi retired and us saying, you need to come back because it's different and different. You know, um, one it, reason it was why I was different, one, that's true. <laughs> yeah, we could all get a word in at that point. <laughs> Why without Stray Head? But one of the things that Stray showed me, uh, used to always say, was heavy is the crown. And when he retired, I started to realize what heavy is the crown meant. Because now you didn't have Big 92 over there with all the office linemen. I was like, we got to block that guy. So, like, me and O.C. was, like, feasting on these old linemen because we were getting all these one-on-ones. And then straight, you know, one coming. And then, like, I was like, okay, so this is what the real double team looks like. So, I'm, I'm, so that's why we were calling you at, hey, man, you got to come back. Because yeah, he called I'm, me. I'm getting literally. tired of getting punched in my face by four people. Cause you know, because you know, he and OC used to call me old man. Old man. Kick oh, him, we going to kick him out of the league. league, old man. <laughs> and, and then I said, heavy is the crown. You guys going to find out one day. Yeah. I retire about three or four games into the season. I get a And OC got hurt that year. OC got hurt. So I'm out there just getting molly he gets. I get a call from <laughs> Justin Tuck. I'm like, what the hell does Justin Tuck want? Yeah. Hey, what's up? Hey. Hey, man. I know what you mean now. <laughs> These double teams are real out here, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. And I, but it goes to the point, like, it was like, man, when I got to year 11, I was like, man, that's enough. I'm, I'm like, I don't know how y'all guys ain't, like, concussed on a, on a daily. I tell you what, I think I lasted so long because I enjoyed being around the guys. Yeah. Like, my last year, I, 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 I came back. I really didn't think we were going to win the Super Bowl, I'll be honest, until we got to down the road, and I was like, Something special with this team. But I came back because it was the one year of my career I decided to come back and not care about if somebody else is ready to play. Like, I wanted to motivate you guys, and I wanted to give you the pep talks, and I wanted to work out and show you from example. But I didn't go into a game going, I wonder if that guy really put in the work. I trusted that you put in the work. And I just wanted to have fun. Because for the first 14 years, 
I was stressed. <laughs> Year 15, I was like, man, whatever happens, happens. I don't care if I get a sack or whatever. I'm going to celebrate the guys. We're going to have fun. And then these fools win us a Super Bowl. It was amazing. The locker room really was special. I, I have to say, the locker room, the guys, the personalities during those years in New York was, was something really special. You want one of these? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. I got it. Oh, you got them? Okay. Um, and you made me think of something when you were just talking about well, I got something the, about you too, by the, the way. 2001 season. That's for the first game after 9-11, we had to go to Kansas City. Mm -hmm. And that was an emotional day, and we weren't sure how that was going to go, Arrowhead. Fans were amazing, and they really embraced us, and we ran out with the American flag, and it was incredible. But there's a story that so many people don't know pregame. Oh. Do you remember Keith uh -oh. Hamilton? Hammer? The hammer. The hammer. The hammer. Uh -oh. You know, I don't know about you guys. He was the scariest dude in our locker room to me. Like, I was afraid of Keith Hamilton. You are not the only one. <laughs> I'm afraid of Hammer right now. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, he was there when I was there. We were scared too. <laughs> this he guy was, was he like. He's different. He, yeah. Pre game before the Kansas City Chiefs, Glenn Parker, our Pro Bowl offensive guard, was oh. taping his fingers and throwing the empty rolls of tape behind him. Oh my God. And he was hitting Keith Hamilton with the tape. Oh, Lord. And Hammer looked at him. He was like, hey, bro, stop that. Mm hmm. And Glenn just kept, he was, a, he was a vet, he'd been in the league forever, just kept taping his, throwing it over. He hit him again. Keith Hamilton got up out of his stool, and he knocked Glenn Parker well, out. Well, he, he did it fairly. He said, if you do it one more time, and he did it. And he he said, warned him. And he warned him, he said, stand up. He at least allowed him to stand up. <laughs> Our, our Pro Bowl offensive guard is unconscious in the locker room before we take the field. Like I, it, we look back now and it's funny, but because I remember somebody was like, Hammer, stop, you're going to kill him. It kind of reminded me of the MC Hammer dance before he started. Hammer, don't hurt him, Hammer. And he was, stop, Hammer, you're going to kill him. <laughs> Do you guys, who was your favorite locker room personality from, from your years? And then there's a lot to choose from. Like, I remember Shockey was crazy. Amani was great. I mean, we had a lot of, we, obviously, we had Stray. I mean, when I was there, we had Seahorn, we had Barrow, yeah. we had Jesse Armstead. Like, we, there, was a, there was a lot of, Ron Dane, there was had, a lot of We guys. had The Bachelor. That's right. <laughs> the Bachelor, yeah. That's right. It was but, the most dramatic locker room in New York Giants history. But I got to say, in defense, like, not, I'm not going to defend The Bachelor. I don't have to because I, I think you were fantastic. But when you got the show, everybody in the locker room was like, Jesse's going to be The Bachelor. Look at this guy. <laughs> But then he's, we watched it, and then the show came on, and we've been there like, oh, come on, man, tell us who you gave the rose to, man. Yeah. Come on, Jesse. <laughs> I can't. I signed an NDA. We don't even know what the letters mean. Jesse, tell us who got the rose, man. <laughs> we had, wait, remember Nick Grison? Our, one of the, we had a linebacker from Wisconsin. He used to walk up to me after, and he'd be like, hey, man, you know that girl Cindy you just sent home? She's still single? <laughs> I'm like, bro, that's not how it works. It's not about you. But we had a lot of we had a lot of pranksters in the locker room. We, we yeah. all did. We oh, all did. who was who was one back in the Bill Parcells days? Oh gosh. Um, well, you didn't mess with LT. You know, that's one person you didn't prank. You, everybody. Phil was good. Phil, Hostella, they were good at pranks. You know, one of the one prank that we we laugh about was um, Johnny Parker, our um, strength and conditioning coach, yeah. and. And these guys, you know, when you're a rookie, you one or two, you bring donuts, milk, and OJ every Saturday. And the quarterbacks wanted jelly donuts. And for weeks, they would bring jelly donuts. And when they go into their meeting and come back out, the jelly donut would be gone. Johnny Parker would eat the jelly donuts. He constantly did that. So finally, we put cameras in the in the locker room, just to figure out who it was. I mean, finally we realized it was him. So we decided to put some X likes <laughs> in the jelly donut. Oh, that's terrible. So instead of watching film, we turned on the camera and we watched Johnny Parker come up with his newspaper, set it down, open up the jelly. Box of jelly donuts, cross his leg, and just go into town. 
And we sitting there laughing and laughing. So now he's our strength and conditioning coach. He's the one that gets you going in practice, gets you to running and stretching. So we go out on the field. So we're really taking our time because we're trying to get this thing chance to work. <laughs> so Bill is yelling like, come on, just, you know, go and we just really, a lot of gagging, getting out on the field. So we get out on the field and then you, we always run across this field, a couple of sprints, and we really did run. I mean, Bill is just getting pissed at us, but we was giving it time to work. So after we got through jogging across the field, we started doing calisthenics, and then we started doing some more things. And Johnny Parker, let me forget this, he was up there saying, come on, man, we got to get ready to do this week. <laughs> we got one, one more drill. He said, Bill, I have to excuse myself for a minute, Bill. <laughs> and he left the field and left a trail. <laughs> That's what I tell you. <laughs> and we have never laughed as hard as ever. And Johnny Parker, right now today, had an idea who did it. So he got even. I'm going to tell the story real quick. He got even with Sims. Sims drove a Jaguar. Every day to practice. Johnny Parker went to the fish market and bought the biggest fish he can buy. And he put it between the radiator and the engine. And Phil would drive home every day. So after the second day, Phil would come into the locker room and he would say to a lot of guys, something wrong with my car. And, and, you know, we'll sit around and say, what do you mean, Phil? He said, I, it's, it just smelled kind of funny. <laughs> so after about the fourth day, he comes in. He said, guys, I'm serious. Something wrong with my car. You got to come out. So Bavaro, who never do anything, Bavaro, the quietest guy of all, <laughs> Bavaro said, hey, Phil, you want me to look at it for you? <laughs> and Phil said, yes, come on. So we all go out, me, Phil, uh, some more guys go out. And we can smell it, but we can't figure out where it's coming from. So we're looking all up under the seat. We're looking in the trunk. It never fazed us to look under the hood because the scent was so much inside the car, we knew it was in there. So finally, somebody said, let up the hood. Ladies and gentlemen, the only thing we're left with bones. Maggots. And that was not nice. <laughs> so Phil decided to put Johnny Parker bumpers against the gate and put it on his car. And when he drove off, he left his bumper. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all were hard, hard on each other. Yeah, no, we had, we hard. It's not we nice. hard. I, th I thought the one you was going to tell straight was funny. That, nah. That's a good one. Yeah, That's a good one. which one are you talking about? Um, no, not Bob. I'm not telling you. You're him. not talking to nah, him. I will yeah. tell you one thing, though. When you, you know, Coughlin was so strict with the rules that if you ran into a meeting, and I always was like that five minute early, I was right there right at five minutes because I'm, I just had to be that guy. <laughs> and I would run in and I didn't forget if my ringer was on or not. So instead of chancing it, I would just throw my phone across the room or put it on somebody's stool and go into the meeting room. And I made the mistake of putting it, I don't know if it was Sean O'Hara's stool. And Sean O'Hara and Eli are probably the two biggest pranksters. Like, don't let that face fool Rich. you. This dude yep. is wicked. Yep. He's wicked. I mean, 100%. So he's wicked. <laughs> put, so I mean, put, all I know socks. is I come out of the meeting, because I'm like, I, I don't want to take my phone in, because if it rings, it's five grand. Five Gs. So you might as well answer the thing, OK? So I threw my phone like, I don't care if it rings, won't, it won't be in the meeting. I come out, I pick up my phone, and I'm looking. Sean took my phone and decided to take a picture of his junk. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's my screensaver. <laughs> Offensive linemen are sick. <laughs> no, they're the worst one. I got, I got a story. We got kids here. I see. I can't tell. But offensive linemen are absolutely the nastiest yeah. human beings. Well, I, got it, I, got it from, like I got it. I got it. I got it from O'Hara a lot, and uh, we'd go out for for a uh, 
a practice, like a, 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 a kind of a pre-practice. You go out in just your shorts and maybe you have a helmet and you walk through some things. You go over some new plays. So when you get to practice, it's, it's uh, you know, you've, you've done it one time and it's sharp. And so we go out just in your gym shorts and we're going to practice. And Sean had cut a hole in the bottom of his shorts and he was not wearing any underwear. <laughs> and Sean's the center. So, you know, the first play, uh, yeah, I get under, I get under center. <laughs> You know, yeah, you feel some stuff on the top of my hand that's not oh normal. My God. And so I, I check, got, check, check. I, shotgun. yeah, I checked the shotgun, you know, Coughlin, what are you doing, Eli? What, what, we can't run this out of shotgun. He started, I'm, like, oh, I'm not going under there, but I don't want to, but, but I want to call out Sean. Like, you know, if the coach finds out what he did, he's not to be happy either. So I'm trying to protect him. I'm trying to, you know, trying to run out every play out of shotgun. I'm telling someone else to switch shorts with them. I'm like, Snee, you got to switch shorts with them. It's like, I'm not wearing those. <laughs> so, but, wow. Yeah, Thanks, that was fun. That well, was okay, we only got about a minute left. So I just want to ask you all, uh, throughout your playing careers, obviously with the Giants, there's a lot of great rivalries out there. Some say Eagles, some say Dallas. You might say New England based on Super Bowl history. Plax, I'll start with you. We'll just go down the line quickly. Who was your favorite opponent when you were on the Giants to play? There's against? nothing like going down to Texas and beating them Cowboys in the Texas Stadium. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like winning in Dallas, man. Nothing like it. Stray, what about you? Oh, man. I mean, it's nothing better than Jerry Jones disappointed, I will say. But I, I, I used to love going right down the turnpike and putting a stomp of the Eagles out Eagles. Here. OJ? I, I must agree with Strahan. The, the Eagles fan are the worst fans in America. I mean, it brought great pleasure to go down there and kick their butt. So, yeah, the Eagles. E? I'm going with the Cowboys just because we beat them in the playoffs. We knocked them out in 11 to enter the playoffs. In 07, beat them in the playoffs. So this, we beat them on so many big games that it was just always, those are just great memories. Well, tough to break the tie. All Listen, right. man, the Eagles, I hate them. Um, <laughs> the Redskins, com Commanders, Commanders, I With hate the Washington them. Washington football but team. But those Cowgirls, <laughs> that is by far, and like, just, being able to watch Jerry come down and think his team is going to win that game and already hand out them next playoff tickets and, and we politely stump their ass out. Yeah. Get your Cowboys. popcorn ready. <laughs> Cowboys. Well, guys, listen, it, it's been a lot of fun, and it's been really fun to kind of relive some of this and, and uh, you know, bring the best fans in the NFL behind the curtain a little bit. Go down memory lane. I really appreciate you all being here. It's been fun being up here with you. I appreciate you so much. In fact, I actually got a gift I brought for all of you up here. So I've got a new clothing line. It's called Jay Palmer. It's elevated <laughs> sports apparel, and I got a little something for each and every one of oh, you. Thank you. Oh, so this is nice. available on fanatics.com. It'll be available early September, just in time right, for the NFL you. season. That's Michael. That's Michael. I mean, we all look alike, but Michael's over there. Yeah. There God, Lord, how in the hell you make that? Mistake? I got you. How you make that? <laughs> First of all, I don't even have a doubt. This is for you, OJ. Holy shit. I, I made sure, Mike, I got you the 250-pound stuff. I didn't thank get you, you the 280-pound stuff Jay Palmer, well. thank, I love free, man. Yeah, thank you got it, man. Listen, thank you all so much for being here tonight. Appreciate you. Enjoy the there Night of go. Champions. Have fun at thank the Thank you, guys. Thank you. See you all. Take care. Thank you.